Now, we're joined by Louise Quinn because Arsenal have won the league, their first league title since 2012, and Louise is with us on the line. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. How are you? Yeah, very well. Hey, big congrats. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Feels good. I'm sure it does. A 4-0 win away to Brighton secured it. These are supposed to be tense on a knife-edge game. So you're not meant to cruise to 4-0 wins when you win the league. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't think we were really expecting to, uh, to get a win like that. And I think we wanted to, to take away as much of the, uh, you know, how tense it could have been, if, especially if we left it till the, the last game of the season um, against City. So, uh, yeah, we wanted to definitely get the job done and... You know, we, we definitely did it in style. Yeah, you really did. I mean, it would have been an amazing occasion if it did go down to the last game with City. They're in second place. It's been you two very much in the title race all season. Yeah, yeah, but of course you're a neutral, so you'd love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I want it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people did, but uh, now we definitely wanted to get the job done. And, you know, we know that City are a fantastic side, so, you know, it definitely would have been a game for the neutrals. But, um, you know, I think, yeah, definitely the... Us two teams would have it would have been some battle, but um, mm. you know, that, you know, we wanted to get it to get it done and dusted for sure. Arsenal finished third last year, and then City were in second, and Chelsea won the championship last year. What were the expectations this year? Who were the favourites going into the title race? Um, yeah, like I suppose it still would have, you know, would have been those top two, but I, th- I think a lot of people did see our, you know, see our potential and. I think it was kind of the start of our season last year that, um, you know, kind of put us put us down a bit further, where, you know, where we didn't want to be. And, mm. you know, we, we gradually got better and better. And, you know, we had uh, we had Joe Montemoro coming in and, you know, really just kind of just transformed this. But, you know, he wasn't able to, to implement everything he wanted to do kind of at that stage. So, you know, as soon as, soon as we got going in, in pre-season, you could really see that, you know, the the work that he wanted to put into this team was was really working and, you know, we had a we really had a fantastic preseason and a and a really great start to the season as well. And I think that just kept kept flowing and kept going. I mean it's been really dominant. Played nineteen, won seventeen, lost two. That's pretty much close to smooth sailing. Yeah, re- relatively smooth, I suppose, yeah, in t- in terms of results. You know, we definitely uh uh you know had our had our ups and downs and, you know, we had a, we had a lot of injuries, but, you know, and, and we had a, a relatively sw- small squad, which, you know, which was what Joe, Joe wanted. He wanted to work with the, you know, a select, a select few players. And, yeah. you know, unfortunately we then, we, we did have some, you know, long-term injury, um, injury problems, but. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry know, to interrupt. I was reading at 1.7 frontliners were gone. Yeah, yeah, about that. And, you know, unfortunately, I think that was around the time of, um, you know, the, the last time we played City, um, you know, and, and still kind of the same thing when, when we played Chelsea. They were the two, you know, the two losses of the season. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, that's where people had to people had to adapt. They had to play out of position. You know, they had to consistently, you know, a bunch of us playing 90 minutes week in, week out, mm. um, you know, which is exactly what you want to do, but... You know that uh, it did get you know it did get intense at, at stages when we were you know struggling with, with you know eleven twelve players yeah in a lot of times so um you know we we really battled through it and you know for us we just we couldn't make those excuses we had we knew we had the rest of the players were strong enough to be able to do it so uh, yeah we we just carried on and you know it's it's come good at the end of the season it's a first league for Arsenal since twenty twelve so it's been a while and they've generally had a very good uh, women's team down the years. They're the only English club I was looking to have won the Champions League. So it is something they want to do well and they seem to invest in. So I'm sure, you know, seven years is a long time. Uh, I don't know what you guys, did you guys feel a certain pressure from the club to get the job done? But I'm sure there's a big sigh of relief and a, a real happiness that you have managed to get it done. Yeah, exactly. I don't know whether it was, um, you know, a pressure, but it was, you know, definitely, definitely a goal and, you know, I think I think even last year for us, I think we actually, you know, we we should have, you know, got Champions League, and we, you know, we just slipped up in one of the matches towards the end. So we knew the, you know, we knew the potential was there to mm. do it, and you know, even yeah, in our in our uh, little social area in the club, you know, there is a, a list of uh, you know achievements up there, and you know the history of what the women's team has done and all the cups they've won and. You know, we're very aware that it's been missing a league title for, you know, for quite some time. And, um, 
yeah, so we just wanted to, you know, do right there and, and fix that. And, you know, that's, that was, that was definitely our main goal. And, um, you know, for us, we've, we've been quite successful in the FA Cup as well recently. But, yeah. you know, I think to get that league title and, and back into Champions League was, you know, was definitely the number one. I don't know if you saw the uh, 42, Daddy, but Joe Montemero, your coach, was um, quoted. He was talking about you and he said, when I came in and I saw Louise Quinn, they told me that she's just a typical defender, wins the ball, just plays it long, plays it into the channels and stuff like that. And then talked about this um, transformation which has taken place. I think he's trying to like be the Arsene Wenger to your Tony Adams here or something. That he's, um, he's turned you into Laurent Blanc or something at the back. Talk to us about this. Yeah, honestly, I, I think, uh, you know, I'll try to be doing five turns and stuff on the edge of the box, <laughs> if you'll let me. But um, now he's, uh, we did, he, he told me about this as well. And we had a, you know, we had a good laugh about it. But right. he really has, um, you know, he really has transformed me in that way. And just, it's, you know, that's, it's our sort of style of play. And mm. if I want, if I want to be in that starting 11, I've, I've got to adapt and I've got to do that. And, um, you know, he's, he's had the confidence in me to do it and, Believe, like yeah, believe me, I have I've failed plenty of times, mm. you know, on the training pits to try to do it, and and you know, and, and even in matches. But the fact that he just keeps encouraging me to do it, and you know, the the girls around me, if you know, if it wasn't for their you know their movement in front of me, there'd be no way I'd be able to you know link those passes. Yeah, because so, it's you know, it, it, it's difficult. Like it's one thing for an entire team to try and play a more possession based game. It's another for a centre half who's not used to doing it having to take on that responsibility. You know, I, I, I presume it's a back four. I haven't seen too much of it this year. But So say, you know, full-backs push on and centre-half split and you take the ball. That's high stakes. I mean, I mean, it's all very well saying, look, go out, Louise, play. I want you to play. Just play, play, play. But, I mean, if you start giving away goals by giving up the ball cheaply and uh, repeatedly, then it's going to get a bit messy. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I suppose that's, that sometimes it is, it is the risk risk that we take and you know some of you know I'm, I'm definitely someone that just wants to you know secure the ball and secure the pass and mm. you know sometimes it, sometimes it will be a you know a, a safe pass for me but as long as we're you know we're keeping possession because some you know a lot of our a lot of our work is yeah you know even just bouncing the ball into midfield to get it straight back off them and just yeah you know move other teams around and you know I have a uh, Leah Williamson who I've been playing with for the for the year is a you know is a fantastic player she's a real you know a real ball player so uh you know even for me I had to I had to get up to that standard and you know and she's only a young player she's only 22 so um right you know I've even learned so much from her but yes you know to have to have the confidence you know of, of the girls around me to do that has been has been amazing and we've uh we've worked on our recovery runs as well so if we if we lose the ball so uh right yeah we're all alert I would presume a bit more enjoyable as well to be playing a bit of football or a bit more football than you had been or, or is that how you found it? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's it's nice to be, you know, to be getting on the ball and to, you know, we're, we're taking games where the only way that we can, you know, lose it is if, is if we don't have the ball. So the way that we're going to win games is just keep the ball. Right. Keep the ball no matter what. If, even if we're getting starting to get up top, if we need to, you know, start again, switch play. Yeah. Um, you know, that's exactly what we'll do. And, you know, but in terms of that, you know, for the, you know, for the Irish team for the moment, we're still, you know, we're still working on that and trying to become more of a, you know, a ball playing team. So, um, you know, I really do like, I genuinely do like, all, you know, all styles of, mm how we play and you know that's that's how I played in Sweden for four years as well it was you know really 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 tough defending and then yeah just you know pass pass it off into midfield and you know let them let them do the work mm. um yeah so it's uh it's just been brilliant that I've been able to you know ad adapt to it and you know be able to to do what what the manager has has wanted me to do and yeah, as I say, like I've just been so determined to get into that starting eleven. So you know, I'll I'll try everything. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you were in here doing the paper review a couple of months ago. Now it's hard; the months go by quickly. It's hard to know. I can't remember exactly when. Um, but the last couple of months, and we we just very briefly chatted at the time, and I remember saying to you that. I think Manchester United had just got their ladies team going, their women's team going, and I was thinking, God, that's mad, a club that size. 
And you said, yeah, but in fairness, now that they are doing it, they are doing it properly. You know, some clubs, it's just a bit of a PR exercise and, you know, they just have a team to say they have a team. It always struck me that Arsenal are doing it the right way. Can you talk to us about how you're supported, how it's run? Like, do you, how does training work? Is it at the same facility as the men's team? Is there any cross-pollination in terms of, I don't know, like would an Unai Emery pop in and, and give some thoughts? Or, or how does it work? How are you guys supported at Arsenal? Um, you know, I suppose I was I was very lucky at the time I came in that, you know, everything was really has been has been in place like that for, you know, for a good few years. Mm. And, you know, it has improved just just as I came in. There was, you know, a brand new um, high performance gym uh, just, you know, on on the grounds, which has been, you know, incredible. And, you know, all of all of the teams share that gym as well. So. You know, we're we're constantly in there with you know with all the academy boys, and then you know some of the some of the men's team are are in there at, at stages as well. You know, there's some great rehab machines and stuff in there, and you know, walk bikes for you know a lot for recovery and rehab. And yeah, like you know, we're it definitely does feel like like one club. We're all we're all on the you know the same pitches. You know, luckily for us, there's there's about eleven or twelve of them, I think. So um, I would presume the yeah. Arsenal training pitches are nice. They are, you know, if you have a look at your living room carpet, it could be something like that. I, I, they, I would, I would know, think so. Yeah, are, are phenomenal, and they're, you know, they're working every day, and you know, and, it, and it's even that, you know, we pass by, you know, those men and women every day who are who are taking care of the pitches, and you know, you'd be stopping, having chat, saying hello, you know, doing whatever, and everyone knows the results of of every team, you know, even from the academy lads to the men, and. You know, you definitely even feel the, you know, the effects. You, you know, when you've maybe had a good result, you know, because you know all the staff in the club know, and Great. you know, you, you definitely know when there's been a loss because it, you know, everyone everyone feels the effect. Um, no one's talking to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, kind of a surreal thing I would pres- I, well maybe it's not actually maybe you get used to it very quickly to be in the same gym as the Arsenal, some of the Arsenal first team at times or around them or does that become normalised very very quickly or is it still uh, a little bit surreal um, I think now at this stage it has come you know a little bit a little bit normal yeah. um, because you know we've we've crossed paths with them so many times now and you know can just chat to them you know chat to them as as footballers and even that, like as you were saying, you know, Unai Emery was was in the gym a few weeks ago, just you know, just doing a doing a proper workout. Mm. He was a uh, you know proper sweating, and you know we were just in there at, at the same time, you know, doing doing our session, and yeah, you know he he hasn't, you know, he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, you know come in and kind of give those sort of chats. You know, I think each manager knows you know where their where their place is, and, yeah, yeah, and um, but you know just to even you know, stop and have a chat with us every now and then. It's, you know, it's it's very nice and just to, you know, to hear hear how they're doing personally, you know, there's there's a lot you can see that happens in matches or on the TV, but, you know, it's not until you're you're kind of in that situation how, you know, how you know they're really getting on. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that just sounds like a really, really nice ideal atmosphere. Um, and Champions League beckons next year. I was looking at the Champions League landscape. It's very different in the women's game in that, the English clubs really haven't featured as winners. Arsenal, the only English side to have won a Champions League, that was once a number of years ago. But like the Barcelona's, Real Madrid's, Bayern Munich's not there. Lyon have won three in a row. They seem to be very strong. I think PSG runners up twice. There's a couple of German clubs. Frankfurt were there thereabouts. So like that must be a massive target to get into the Champions League. I mean, for you to be playing Champions League football must be something that you're relishing next year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's exactly where Arsenal, you know, needs need to be again. Um and yeah, that was it was two thousand seven when yeah. you know when when we last won it and you know it's it's been a lot it's been a long time coming. But yeah, you know, some of those European teams are, you know, very, very strong. Like the likes of Leon, um, they really do get to bring in some of the best players. You know, it's I think, you know, the majority of the team is the French national starting team and right. You know, then throwing in some of the best players from around the world as well, um, so they are, you know, they they are the ones to the ones to beat. But you know, as it shows now, Barcelona, um, I think Barcelona are, I think it is a Barcelona Leon final now. Okay. Um, that's you know that's that's coming up, and 
you know, that's that's huge for Barcelona to get in there now. But yeah, you know, our our, our target is that now, and we've had a we've had a really great season, and um, you know, Ch- Chelsea have done very well this year, getting to the semi final. But um, yeah, listen, now it's it's going to be you know it's going to be up to us, and it's going to be up to up to City to to represent um, England in it next year, and you know that's it's that's exactly what we're you know we're going to want to be doing, and yeah, you know we. Played some of the the European teams. We did play. Um, uh, we played uh, PSG, um, you know, earlier in the year as well. So and you know and, and we got a result out of that. So you right. know we know you that. can compete at that level. Yeah, 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 we definitely can. And if, you know, if you look at our squad on paper, it's uh, we have you know we have some great names and some world class players. So mm. uh, yeah, we're definitely going to relish it. Uh, amazing. This is all a long way from two days before the start of the season two years ago when you arrive at Notts County and then they tell you two days before the start of the season, hey, sorry, Louise, but basically the team doesn't exist anymore. Best of luck. Hey, bye. You, you pretty much said it there. That's, that's how the meeting went. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, don't yeah. think, I don't think I'm exaggerating by all accounts. It was, <laughs> it was pretty much as brutal as that. It was fairly blunt. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Um, you know, and... and Alan Hardy couldn't even be there to, you know, to tell him, tell us ourselves. So, uh, you know, the, it, chair, the chairman wasn't there, no? Yeah, yeah, not there. So, um, yeah, which was very, very, you know, tough, tough to take as well. Um, you know, and especially for the, a lot of the girls who, who really had settled, you know, settled into that club. And I think it was just, I hadn't, I just hadn't settled at that moment. You know what I mean? I, it was still early days for me and I was, you know, just figuring out, you know, my my position in there, and then it just, yeah, it all just it all just changed, you know, very quickly, and uh, yeah, to the thoughts of that, we, you know, so the the club folded on a on a Friday, and then we were supposed to be playing Arsenal on the Sunday, um, you know, the start of the league, and so for that turnaround, that you know, I was able to get get to Arsenal, so you know, so quickly after it all happened, and yeah. You know, now two years later, I'm you know I'm going to be lifting a trophy with them. It's a, it is a, a massive turnaround for sure. Yeah, it sure is because I actually I was just looking into it. North County have relaunched their women's team, so I don't know what went wrong or what was behind the decision, but they've relaunched it now. They're going again. Is that um? I presume that's not a common occurrence in the women's game that teams are folding willy nilly like that. Like was the North County thing. A uh, rare enough example of this happening? Because um, it's not like the Notts County men's team uh, folded, I presume. Yeah, exactly. So it is kind of, you know, one of those where it, it, it does happen in women's football, but generally when it's associated with, you know, with a men's team, it, it has that extra strength behind it and, the and you know, the extra support. Mm. Um, but yeah, from, you know, obviously from what we were hearing then as well, you know, the... The men's the men's side were, you know, were struggling, but I'm not sure if, if they felt any sort of repercussion that we felt. Um, right. You know, we, we weren't able to to get our wages from that month, so um, it was uh, you know, it, re- it really was a just a, a harsh harsh situation. But yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes it does happen, and you know, even a lot when I was in Sweden, you know, there was sometimes talk of clubs that just weren't able to, you know, able to survive, but mm. that was it. They weren't, they weren't attached to a men's team. So, um, yeah, to, you know, at that, at that moment for, you know, for a women's team to become professional, I feel like it definitely does needs, you know, need that support to really, you know, kickstart it and get it going until mm. you know, the club is able to survive by itself. Because I saw there was a good crowd at the Amex on uh, at the weekend, like over five thousand, which is you know very very respectable. It's an eleven team league at the moment. Is that are there plans afoot to expand or are they they consolidating that for the time being? Like is the game about to change even more over the well? I presume it will over the next decade rapidly. Are those plans are those plans in motion? Uh, well, yeah. So at the at the moment they will now be turning it into a a twelve a twelve team league anyway. Right. So only one team um, has got relegated, and so that's um, that's Yeovil anyway, who who were near the bottom, but also they have actually suffered some, you know, some money problems as well, um, that they weren't able to, you know, to keep up with. So mm. you know, it, it's not too uncommon, but you know, the team shouldn't be folding. It was just that they weren't able to meet the criteria um, right. 
of the league, but you know, one team that's that's definitely coming up is uh, is Man United. So um, you know, I feel like that's going to you know definitely add that extra strength to yeah. the league um, in general. And you know, rumours are that they you know they really are going to do some big things um, once they come up and and again invest 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 a lot of money and you know get some get some you know real quality players in. Obviously, they already have you know a brilliant squad already for how they've done the season, but. Mm. To really invest, and I think potentially this, I'm not sure if it's decided yet, but the the next could be Tottenham Hotspur uh, nice. women as well. So again, that could just be you know a brilliant a brilliant team to come up on a you know especially if they're receiving support from you know from the men's side. That's the thing, uh, big names, recognisable names, and then you've got a fan base that you only you only need to tap into a pretty small percentage of that fan base, and very quickly you can have good atmospheres and big crowds. So it seems to make sense. One last area to get your thoughts on: How closely have you followed John Delaney FAI travails over the last month or two? Um, yeah, I've definitely you know I've definitely seen um, seen quite a bit of it. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very kind of tough thing to comprehend at the moment and to you know to take it in. But you know, I think I think it just shows that you know when we were when you know ourselves the women's national team were trying to put up a fight for you know what we deserved. It's it is a shame to hear that you know some of the money wasn't coming our way when it should have been. Mm. Um, well, like let, know, let, so me, let me let me put it to you in this term in these terms when because I think you were told well look the money's not there. But then, like, it emerges, for instance, and we don't have all the facts, and it's not to make the case against just one person. I'm not just doing that in John Delaney's case. But, for instance, as, an, as a high-profile example, you know, there was 36 grand a year paying his rent that you guys didn't even know about. So, like, in that context, I would not be... Um, I wouldn't be blaming any uh, player on your team if they were reading the Sunday Times over the last few weeks saying, what the hell is this? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think, I think we've all kind of, you know, had, had something to say about it. And like, all you can say is that it, it, it is, it's disappointing now. And, and the position, you know, the position that it's in at the moment is that, you know, Sport, I- Sport Ireland have, have pulled the funding mm. um, you know, towards the women's team and grassroots. And Will that affect you, you know, in any real direct way anytime soon, do you know, or is it a wait and see kind of thing? Yeah, it's an absolute wait and see. Okay. Um, you know, we we have you know we've been we've been given no information about it, and you know it's hopefully something that can be resolved um, very soon. But which you know, when it seems it seems to be that it is you know starting to become resolved, but we we literally have you know no information at all. Um, so you know we're we're hearing exactly what everyone else is hearing in the news. Right. Um, but yeah, you know it's just it's just disappointing overall and. You know, hopefully it can just be, you know, fixed up. So us, you know, on, and across the board, League of Ireland, grassroots, everything that, you know, everything just gets put in order so we can, you know, we can perform on the pitch and represent our country to mm-hmm. the the best ability that that we want to do. We, you know, we're incredibly, incredibly proud of wearing the jersey, but, you know, we want, we want our association to be proud of us as well. So mm. hopefully that can, you know, really kick on now. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Um and just a final point then, I guess. So you, City is your last game? Yeah, City in, uh, on the 11th of May. Yeah. Like, you just don't want to win the league and them to beat you. There's just a moral thing going on there where you kind of just really have to beat them. So I, I presume you guys aren't all out in the lash for the next few days and taking that game lightly. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, we're, we're back to it tomorrow. Um, there's a, and, you know, the game isn't until the 11th, so we're, yeah. you know, we're, we're definitely not going to... Uh, to put you know put that game just that it's you know a, a nothing game mm. you know it absolutely is and it's, it's definitely about about pride and for us to to stretch our you know our points league cement you know, your at, cement your status almost you know like there's a there's a certain kind of it, like the rivalry is you two as much as the league so you know yeah. oh absolutely yeah so there's you know we're 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 back at it tomorrow we've you know we've had a, a couple of days off just to you know, to really relax. And that's, you know, that's that's all we've been doing. We've just been trying to, you know, come down from, you know, winning the league. Mm. But, yeah, listen, yeah, City, City aren't going to, you know, we're not going to be in party mode for that. Um, no. Definitely after the game, anyway, when we're lifting the trophy, but uh, not for the game itself. Yeah, no, I can imagine their dressing room pre-match. So uh, that one should be 
an interesting game to say the least. Uh, listen, congrats. What an amazing thing. Um, from two years ago in Notts County to now uh, lifting the trophy is going to be just an amazing occasion. So, Louise, we're delighted for you. Well done. Continued success. Thanks, Mill. Yeah, thanks, Mill, Joe.